the momentum of an object is equal to its mass times its velocity. When no external forces act on a system, the total momentum is constant. This principle is called the conservation of momentum. These men live by certain laws. Sometimes beyond the gambling statutes of the city and county of Los Angeles, but well within certain laws of classical mechanics. Not every man here fully appreciates the fact that win or lose, classical mechanics governs the game of pool. But odds are, when certain laws of physics are applied just right, every man here fully appreciates the effects. Of course, while a billiard ball may obey those laws perfectly, the principles behind them didn't originate in Chalky's Billiard Academy. Some of those principles, like the game of pocket billiards itself, originated in France. As a youth, in the Catholic France of the early 17th century, René Descartes came to love the trappings of mathematics as the workings of God. He loved the power of a finely reasoned argument and the glorious feeling when a concept could be understood in the absolute. It was Descartes who first enunciated this principle. The total quantity of motion in the universe is constant. If a body is not interfered with, it will move at constant speed in a straight line. That's the law of inertia. Galileo's idea perfected by Descartes. But when a body does meet others, it isn't merely brought to rest it transfers its motion to the other bodies. The total quantity of motion is conserved. Though Descartes was the first, the essence of his quantity of motion was in fact expressed better by Isaac Newton. Of course, as competitive as he was, it's doubtful whether Isaac Newton ever challenged a colleague to a game of pool. His challenges or to the intellect alone. And none of his expressions was more powerful and moving than his idea of momentum. In his classic work, The Principia, he wrote, the change in motion is proportional to the force impressed, and it is made in the direction of the straight line in which the force is impressed. Newton used the word motion to mean momentum or in modern terms, the velocity of a body multiplied by its mass. Interactions around this table are complex subjects of social science. Interactions on this table, however, are purely physical in nature and comparatively easy to explain. Again, according to Newton, a single particle of some definite mass has a momentum equal to m times v. Force is the rate of change of momentum. Of course, if there are no forces operating, the rate of change of velocity is equal to zero. Therefore, the vector p is constant, which means the motion of the thing itself is constant. A body with no forces acting on it will continue moving at the same speed in a straight line. This is the law of inertia, Newton's first law. But when billiard balls collide, each one applies a momentary force to the other, causing its momentum to change. Here, Newton's third law gets into the action. The forces the balls apply to each other are equal and opposite. The change in momentum of one ball is, therefore, equal and opposite to the change in the momentum of the other. The total momentum of the two balls, taken together, does not change at all. It's constant. In fact, this new law applies not only to two balls when they strike, but to any number. And not only to the billiard balls themselves, but to the very atoms of which they are made and even in the inner parts of the atoms, the electrons, and neutrons, 
and protons, right down to the ultimate constituents of matter itself. Momentum is always conserved. But there's an easier way to win the game than to keep track of the countless electrons and protons and neutrons in each billiard ball. Even though each ball is composed of atoms in smaller parts, applying equal and opposite forces to each other, each ball behaves as if it were a single body, with all of its mass concentrated at a single point. That point's called the center of mass. And in this situation, it's one of the more explosive ideas in physics. The center of mass is the point to focus on when calculating the velocity and acceleration of a compound body. When no net outside force acts on a compound system, no matter what happens to its individual parts, the center of mass continues to move at constant speed in a straight line. In deriving his second law, Newton might have imagined a collection of compound bodies, not necessarily touching each other. Two bodies of nearly equal mass, or perhaps better yet, two bodies like the Earth and the Moon. He knew hidden forces were at work up there, gravity, for example. Conversely, he could imagine that external forces were not at work on such a system. Then the system wouldn't be accelerated. Its center of mass moves with a constant velocity. If the planet pulls on its moon, then the moon pulls on the planet with an equal but opposite directed force. The vector sum of the two forces and the rate of change of the momentum of the bodies are equal to zero. If the rate of change of something is equal to zero, that something is constant. And that constant, the sum of the momenta of all the bodies, is a conserved quantity. It always stays the same. And the fact that the sum of the masses times the velocities is constant is the law of the conservation of momentum. This law applies to two bodies or three or more bodies throughout the universe, past, present, and future. The good ship Newtonia perhaps not quite the image of a Star Wars defense system, but when it comes to maintaining the physical laws of the universe, who's to say she's not up to the task? Using force when necessary, and alas, it always is. Newtonia fires an asteroid in defense of the laws of the mechanical universe. Including, of course, the law of conservation of momentum. Newtonia recoils. This action and reaction should not be mistaken for timidity under fire. On firing, when the astro shell is blasted off, Newtonia recoils because the total momentum of any system remains constant. So look at it this way. When the shell is fired, it zooms one way, and the good ship Newtonia zooms quite the other. But no matter what direction, no matter how intricate the system, and no matter its specific components, the conservation of momentum remains in play. And for that matter, so does the conservation of energy. Conservation of energy rules every game, no matter what form of energy is involved, and no matter what the masses of the bodies are. But in this game, there's only kinetic energy, and all bodies have the same mass. What happens when they collide? Momentum, P, is a vector quantity that's the product of the mass of an object times its velocity. In other words, the velocity is equal to the momentum divided by the mass. Kinetic energy, K, is one half mass times velocity squared.
Therefore, kinetic energy is P squared over 2m. All of this reveals one of the great secrets, not only of nature, but of how to play winning billiards. When one ball with momentum, P0, strikes another which is at rest, there are only two possible results. After the interaction, each ball has some momentum, P1 and P2. According to the law of conservation of momentum, P0, the initial momentum, is equal to the final momentum, P1 plus P2. This is a vector equation. The three vectors form a triangle, and in this case, a very special triangle. Remember, in the collision between billiard balls, the only form of energy involved is kinetic energy, ignoring a tiny bit of heat generated by the collision. Not only is momentum conserved, but also kinetic energy is conserved. Since the masses are the same, P0 squared equals P1 squared plus P2 squared. But that's the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. And as a result, P1 is perpendicular to P2. In other words, when one billiard ball strikes another, which is at rest, they come off at right angles. That's one possible result. But is that the only possible outcome? No. A clever player can make things happen by applying English. In other words, making the ball spin as well as roll. But even without English, there's still one more possibility. One more way to make a shot that won't work if the balls come off at right angles. If the balls hit just right, that is exactly head on, both laws, conservation of momentum and energy, can still be satisfied in another way. One ball can stop completely and give all of its motion to the other one. That's the second possibility. Any collision in which both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved is known as an elastic collision. The momentum of an object is equal to its mass times its velocity. When bodies collide, the total momentum remains constant. In any system without external forces, momentum is always conserved. 